There are certain predictable steps that all of us go through when we are going through a spiritual transformation. We go through, first of all, the pain of alienation from the world that we've known, dislocation, a feeling of confusion, of no longer knowing what roles we should apply to our own life, no longer being sure even what values we hold dear. So as these things are ending, fear may arise and we may be very fearful of what we are losing. Fears of being rejected by loved ones, fear of not having enough money, fear that we're not up to the change that we might have to go through, fear of the unknown. What keeps us going? is an inner sense of rightness. So as we are going through what in Christian terms was often called the dark night of the soul, but in fact it's the dark night of the personality, the soul's just fine, and it's the dark night of the ego, because until we start going through this spiritual transformation, we are really driven by the ego. We are animal humans, if you like, looking after ourselves, at the most looking after our family, but not terribly concerned with the whole world. This changes when we start going through our spiritual transformation and our soul starts calling us to be a, a member of the wider community, of the collective, of the co-creators of this planet, and to start working with spirit to manifest our purpose in alignment to that spirit on our planet. And then being called by our soul, being called by spirit, our heart opens and we start feeling more love, deeper compassion for those people who are suffering, deeper commitment to want to do something, not only for our own family or ourselves, but also for the world. The journey in the end will take us to becoming a soul-infused personality. We will still have a personality. You can look at the Dalai Lama and see that he has a very distinctive personality, or a Martin Luther King, or a Mother Teresa. And these are all examples of soul-infused personalities, people who've gone through a spiritual transformation.